1978, a film emerged that captured the essence of the American heartland in a way that few had done before. Days of Heaven transports viewers to the vast, golden plains of Texas in the early 20th century. The story follows a young couple who flee Chicago after a crime of passion, seeking a new life under the big sky. But their dreams collide with the harsh realities of the land, setting off a chain of events that will leave you stunned. As you delve into the world of Days of Heaven, get ready for a roller coaster of emotions. There are moments that will make you laugh, scenes that will shock you, and others that will tug at your heartstrings. But amidst it all, the film paints a breathtaking portrait of love, betrayal, and redemption against the backdrop of the unforgiving prairie. Now, you may be wondering, do you have a cherished memory associated with this movie? Or perhaps, what classic Hollywood actor in this film was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. We're eager to hear your stories and memories related to this cinematic masterpiece. So, keep watching and don't forget to share your thoughts with us. Your voice matters in our community. Released in 1978, the film Days of Heaven directed by Terrence Malick made a significant mark on cinema and popular culture. Praised for its stunning visuals and engaging story, the movie received high acclaim. Its influence stretched beyond its release, inspiring many filmmakers with its style and story themes such as love, betrayal, and redemption, which still connect with audiences today. The movie also sparked various spin-offs and adaptations across different art forms from films to music. Merchandise like posters and soundtracks further remind people of its impact and ongoing popularity. In summary, the reception of Days of Heaven at its time and its lasting effect on culture solidify its place in cinematic history. Its influence remains evident across different mediums, continuing to resonate with audiences. In crafting the 1978 movie Days of Heaven, the production team employed a deliberate approach to authenticity. Costume designer Patricia Norris, aiming to steer clear of the artificial appearance common in studio-made period films, fashioned all the outfits from recycled fabrics and old clothes. The main setting of the narrative unfolds against the backdrop of a genuine mansion rather than a mere facade. Unlike typical film settings, this mansion was fully realized, complete with authentic furnishings and decorations contributing to the film's realism. Behind the lens, cinematographer Nestor Almendros faced a unique challenge during production. Struggling with deteriorating eyesight, he relied on an assistant to capture Polaroid images before each shot. Almendros then meticulously examined these instant photographs under a high-powered magnifying glass to ensure the visual precision of his work. These details highlight the commitment to authenticity in Days of Heaven, from the costumes fashioned out of recycled materials to the fully furnished mansion and the meticulous efforts of a cinematographer battling vision loss. In Days of Heaven, released in 1978, the actor portraying Clifford Irving in the hoax underwent significant physical changes for the role, including altering his hairline, getting a perm, and adjusting his nose. He has a diverse ancestral background, including English, Scots-Irish, Welsh, Dutch, Scottish, German, and French roots, with deep connections to Pennsylvania and lineage tracing back to the Mayflower and Massachusetts in the 1-8600s. The actress has a sister, Lynn Adams, and is related by marriage to Michael Shalhoub and Susan Shalhoub Larkin. Nestor Almendro is inspired by artists like Johannes Vermeer and Edward Hopper, as well as early century photographers, crafted the visual style of the film. Accusations of affairs involving Priscilla Presley and Kim Basinger emerged in Tell All Books by Presley's ex-boyfriend Michael Edwards and Basinger's ex-husband Ron Snyder. Only two 70mm prints of the film exist. One is available for exhibition, while the other remains locked in Paramount's vaults. In a London Evening Standard interview, he mentioned buying a Triumph T140V Bonville with his first paycheck from Greece. He rode various Triumph models in his films, including Days of Heaven. Promotion for the film was challenging because Terence Malick declined interviews and Paramount didn't allow a novelization. Instead, they relied on word of mouth and invitation-only screenings which attracted critics' attention. For the locust close-ups, thousands of live ones were provided by Canada's Department of Agriculture. In the movie, there's a brief scene featuring dogs hunting the prairie. One of the dogs, a German short tire pointer named Jocko von Stalzefen, was a notable champion. Jack Fisk, the set designer, built outdoor sets in Alberta, Canada, using plywood. The farmhouse scene in the film was one of his creations. Interestingly, Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman both declined the role of Bill in the movie. Exteriors were shot in Alberta, Canada, with Jack Fisk constructing the outdoor sets, including the farmer's house. 
The film includes a scene of dogs hunting the prairie, with one of the dogs, a German short tire pointer named Jaco von Stolzhofen, being a notable champion. Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman both turned down the role of Bill in the film. In the making of Days of Heaven, director Terrence Malick took an unconventional approach. He scrapped the script early on and filmed for nearly a year, letting the actors shape the story as they went along. This method gave the film a unique spontaneity and authenticity. One notable moment in the film involves a joke by comedian Red Fox, which earned him a special mention in the closing credits. The film is included in the Criterion Collection, specifically Spine 409. Through its distinctive production process and memorable scenes, Days of Heaven remains a significant piece of cinematic history. After a year of editing, Terrence Malick called Sam Shepard to Los Angeles to shoot inserts. Close-ups of him shot under a freeway overpass were cut into the final film. The visual motif of the far-off farmhouse surrounded by wheat fields is reminiscent of Andrew Wyeth's 1948 painting Christina's World as well as Edward Hopper's house by the railroad. It also evokes Rita, the ranch home of the Benedict family and giant. He did the rodeo circuit, riding Bronx and bulls, including performing in Salinas, CEA the hometown of E.M. Frederick and John Steinbeck. He starred in one movie that got picked for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress Days of Heaven. It's famous for its beautiful camera work and great story, and it's still loved by lots of people who like movies. Besides acting, he was also in a rock band called Holy Mobile Rounders from 1968 to 1971. He did lots of different things creatively, which people really liked. He was also a big part of Hannah Dunn's life, acting as her stepdad. This shows he had a rich personal life alongside his work. Days of Heaven is still popular today because of its story and stunning visuals. Because of his work on this film, he's remembered as someone who made a lasting impact on movies. This was all. In 1978, Days of Heaven hit the screens, introducing audiences to a promising new actor, Richard Gere. He gained recognition in John Willis' Screen World Ball, 30, being listed among the promising new actors of 1978. Despite the film's commercial failure, it left a lasting impression on Susan Sarandon, who remarked that Gear had appeared in many good films, but never in a great one. Interestingly, despite its lackluster box office performance, Charlie Bluedorn, who oversaw Paramount's parent company Golf Plus Western, was so enamored with the film that he offered director Terrence Malick $1 million for his next project, whatever it may be. This demonstrates the profound impact Days of Heaven had on those involved in its creation and those who saw its potential beyond its initial reception.